Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. My name is Manny Manchel. I serve as Chief Impact Officer at the Jewish Federation for Greater Washington. And it's an honor to welcome you for our third session at the Israel at 75 Virtual Book Series, co-sponsored by the Jewish Federation and Moment Magazine as part of Federation's ongoing Israel at 75 initiative. Federation's proud to partner with incredible institutions like Moment as we mark this milestone year of Israel's independence and offer our community members thought-provoking experiences and ways to engage with Israel during these complex times. Today, it's my great pleasure to introduce what will undoubtedly be a rich, thought-provoking conversation with acclaimed author and the voice of important, complex issues, Dorit Rabinian, and focus on her work with on all the rivers. In 2016, after 15 years of silence, Rabinian published All the Rivers, also known as Border Life, which became the center of a political scandal in Israel. The momentous novel, sensitive in its details and enthralling in its peaks, was banned from use in high school curriculum by Israel's Ministry of Education. The book tells a crisscross story by physical and emotional borderlines and courageously marks the deceit in the separation between you and I, between us and them. All the Rivers spent more than one year as number one bestseller in Israel and has been translated in 17 languages. We'll be led once again by Amy e. Schwartz, Moment Magazine's opinion and book editor, as well as the editor of, magazine, of the magazine's popular Ask the Rabbis section. Before coming to Moment, a Amy was a longtime editorial writer and op-ed columnist at the Washington Post covering education, science, culture, where she was named for a Pulitzer Prize in commentary. Please join me in welcoming Amy. Welcome everybody and um, thanks Manny and thanks everyone for turning out. Um, and welcome Dorit, I'm so happy that you're joining us today and so delighted to have the chance to talk to you about your beautiful novel, All the Rivers. Um, Dorit Rabinian is the best-selling author of the acclaimed Persian Brides and Strand of a Thousand Pearls. Um, she is the recipient of the Yitzhak Vinner Prize, the Prime Minister's Prize, the ACUM Award, and the Jewish Quarterly Wingate Award. All the Rivers, the book under discussion today, was named as a book of the year by Haaretz and was awarded the prestigious Bernstein Prize. And that was before it became internationally famous um, as, as the result of um, a scandal that we will talk about. Um, as Manny said, All the Rivers spent more than a year as the number one bestseller in Israel and has been translated into 17 languages. Um, Dorit, um, uh, besides all that, this, this is, book is a wonderful read and uh, I hope everyone, many, many people on the call have, have already read it or are planning to do so. Um, now, your book, as I say, it was well known anyway, but it's um, now best known for in a way that is, I think, well known to American audiences. It's most famous for being banned, like so many recent, recent books that have just shot to prominence um, after being um, removed from a shelf or, 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 or you know, pulled from a school. Um, in, uh, in 2017, um, Israeli, as you, you, um, you told my colleague Marilyn Cooper in, um, in an interview you did with Moment in 2017, you woke up to a call from a journalist friend who said, I have a terrible, I have terrible news, but it's great news for you. Um, and who proceeded to tell you that he had broken the story, that the book had been proposed for the national curriculum, but then had been blocked by the Ministry of Education on the grounds that since it tells the story of a romance between an Israeli woman and a Palestinian man in New York City, it would encourage such relationships in the minds of impressionable teenagers. So let's talk about the controversy, but first let's talk about the book itself. Um, so the book is a novel. It's written as a novel with characters who aren't you. Um, the main character is named Liat. Um, but you've been very open about how it has roots in your own life and your own relationship of the very, very much like the one in the novel. Um, but the main thing, the main difference that strikes a reader is um, 
Liat in the novel is absolutely terrified of anyone at home finding out that she's having this romance with this Palestinian man. She, you know, they dodge Israelis in the city. Um, she won't tell her parents. And you, by contrast, ended up telling the whole world your very personal story. Can you talk about the process you went through, how you decided to tell the story and how much of the story to tell and how that all came about? Hmm. Uh, first, let me thank you very much for having me. Thank you for Manny. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Amy. Uh, thanks everyone who had joined us. It's true that I was, uh, you know, my mission was to tell the love story between Liat and Hilmi, an Israeli Jewish woman who arrives in New York and meets this Palestinian artist who has been uh, trying to achieve his breakthrough in the art scene of New York being an artist. And the, the thing is, I use the, these two to say something more wide about our Middle Eastern lives and our proximities and the fear of being so close and being so influential one towards another. And there is an ethos of isolation that Jews are carrying in diaspora and we're carrying for 2000 years being stateless that we import back to our homeland when we <clears throat> reestablished Israel. So this ethos of not getting mixed is the one I was so fascinated and intrigued by. And I, I find it to be so much in the core of the Jewish identity. I couldn't guess, not in a million years, not in my wildest dreams, that this argument that I might encourage assimilation, that my book might be a danger, and I quote, because it's so ironic, a, danger, a, a dangerous read for the young readers in Israel would be used against me, because that was my theme. So the greatest fear of my heroine, of the main character, the Israeli character who was molded by this Jewish ancient fear of not getting devoured by the surrounding culture and, and, and religions that we used to live among is actually being reflected within the relationship with the Palestinian young man that she falls in love with. Mm -hmm. And she carries this DNA, this Zionist education of not get mixed, not get too intimate with this other that back home is the enemy, but in this spacious, liberated, uh, all opportunities open uh, ground of New York City, she's allowed to get close and to be exploring and to, to learn about herself via his experiences. So I use this duet of the two to say something broader about homeland, about this gap between the experience of being in exile and, and being at home, being belonged and being watching home from a distance. Mm -hmm. And all the obvious experience of being born in Israel, raised in Israel, being an Israeli, all of a sudden throw my characters away from home was the most uh, elegant, efficient, and literary way I could watch and observe and tell about what being an Israeli is. Mm -hmm. I need to take this distance to, to say something very uh, millimetric, perhaps microscopic, via mm -hmm. this telescope. Right, right. Uh, uh, an example that sort of has a bigger, that, that has cast a, a larger, a larger shadow. Um, well, it's interesting you you put it that way because it sounds like I mean, you made artistic choices for to make Liat behave the way she does in the in the book. 
was that also partly did you experience was that also true of you in this experience or did you sort of oh. add that right I mean, is that something you experienced yourself the struggle to to get out of the that mindset characters in life and characters in books they have a major difference i mean humans were easygoing <laughs> i mean we can we can over laugh difficulties and we can uh, forgive ourselves much more easily but in order to cause cause this drama to create this dramatic tense and and conflict which is the mm. the heart of storytelling i had to distance myself from the, the, the israeli character and make her much more judgmental much more severely critical towards herself and more obedient more obedient, more um, uh, giving much more care about right and wrong. She's very and respectful course, of her parents, for instance. She always calls them I'm, right on time. I'm, you you know. can be respectful for your parents and at the same time be respectful for your desires, but she is much more loyal yeah. to the fears that she was inherited by mm -hmm. the Israeli education. Well, it's interesting because in, in a way, it sort of flips the script. People, I don't know, maybe this is just an American Jewish thing, but I, I suspect not. People think that, you know, there's there's prejudice about Jews or fear of Jews or, you know, hostility, antipathy towards Jews from the Palestinian side. And in this in this novel, it has a sort of this fairy tale quality. It's really all on her side in a way. I mean, he's angry, but he's so giving and open and accepting of her from the first moment and he sees a future and he's angry that she doesn't it's it, i thought you, you were kind of flipping the script in a way <laughs> for preconceptions they, they, that... they are being shaped by stereotypes and fears and and stigmas and and we we khilmi is an artist he's an intellectual he's politically aware he's a he's a man she's a woman mm -hmm. uh, and herself, she's she's more um, she's more pragmatic, and he's more of a dreamer. And another thing, Muslims are much more welcoming to newcomers than us Jews. We're very exclusive, and they are much more inclusive. And and him himself as a person, he's more of a, a believer. You must have a believer. In in a in a romance between two that between a Romeo and Juliet, you have somebody to carry on the belief that it's possible. Because mm -hmm. if they're both cancel the possibility, it won't be happening. Uh, I I I go back to the autobiographical um, circumstances of writing this novel. This novel would have never been written unless. My partner in New York had lost his life so tragically. I was I was living my life. I wasn't expecting to be writing a novel about us, but I needed everyone to fall in love with him as much as I did. Mm. I needed everyone to know what a beautiful coexistence we experienced and what a beautiful conversation that were as much as they were loud and angry and I got furious with how much he he wouldn't let go of this option of my national state. And as, as a person, I'm, I'm much more of a moderate uh, uh, believer. I believe in, in compromises. Mm -hmm. um, and romantically, I, I reflected this on the two characters because in in falling in love and maintaining a, a romantic relationship, you must have one of the two schools, one that believes in a by identity <laughs> existence and the ones that believe in uh, divisions and living next to each other in harmony and with great love, but allowing independency mm. to each of the entities that are combined and uh, into each other. But um, I, I believe in a, in a two-state solution, and I believe in a two-entities uh, romantic relationship. 
that's so funny. I hadn't appreciated till this moment that the, the, the characters' political views about what should happen to Israel and Palestine actually mirror their views of what should happen to the, to the two of them, right? He sees a future of them together and she doesn't see it. She thinks they can only be apart, right? Was that, was that your intent? Yeah, I, I, I wanted to, I, I, I wasn't fearful of the fact that he might be uh, taken too much of a, you know, like a dreamer, like a John Lennon, you know, uh, let's, let's have the, the, this experience, this Zionist uh, Palestinian uh um adventure towards a happy ending because he he himself my muse Hassan Forani uh was very much like this and since I I I wanted to portray his character I took on myself the job of being the bad guy of being <laughs> the one doubtful <laughs> of being the one hesitative of being the one and, and I believe that as Israelis, we have the privilege of being the more, um, because of being gained with the privileges, with our freedoms, with our liberties, with our opportunities, with our state. Being in sovereign state for 75 years, it's a big deal. We were the triumphers of the war that took place 75 years ago. And since that, we have the, we're obliged and we ha we're committed to be the one with more chances. And one of the chances that we must take is give peace a chance. Mm, that's interesting. The, the, the book, just to, um, to stay with the characters for another moment, the book is, is the voice in the book is suffused with Liat's regrets, you know, in retrospect anyway, you know, she, she's, she's quite certain of her course in the book that they must part, but afterwards she's gripped with these terrible regrets, everything, you know, from the fact that she doesn't take those last few phone calls from him to the larger thing, you know, that she doesn't, she didn't, wasn't able to be more giving. Is that, is that something you felt too or and and was the was writing the book sort of a way to resolve that or is that also something you just invented for her good hunch <laughs> um as i said I, I wanted to maintain the conversation i wanted to have i wanted to have him around and sometimes i really felt he was around when i was writing it because he had his opinions <laughs> and he wasn't <laughs> I, 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 and there were moments that I felt him present in my study because because he was invested in this novel and sometimes I thought that the scandal has to do with him pulling strings in heaven because <laughs> he liked he liked to do those because uh, it felt like a whole ridic ridiculous joke that took off control um you felt it was a joke on you the the scandal <laughs> the scandal wasn't uh, it didn't feel at the beginning it wasn't felt as a joke it was felt more like a an attack because i was uh i wasn't sleeping for three months it was it was it was uh I, it was very anxious i was intimidated i was haunted i the, the, the Minister of Education back then was Naftali Bennett, that nowadays when we were in such a mess due to uh, Netanyahu, I hear people from my camp, from the peace camp, longing for Bennett to come back. But um, <laughs> back then, so much he, <laughs> he was so much personally attacking me and his disciples, his followers were so much taking serious of his pointing out at me as if I'm the enemy of the nation that I, I experienced uh, bullying, but not only digitally. <laughs> well, Nowadays, you, see, you, you describe in, in, you describe to my colleague, and I think you've said in other uh, coverage as well, how this one group that's against, you know, 
interracial whatever mis what you know what they used to call miscegenation that that this uh that this group was actually marching up and down outside your house these people chanting about you know how terrible it was to have these cross cultural relationships it sounded like the worst nightmare of Liad in the novel you know that that the uh the, the, the Israelis are actually demonstrating in public, yelling at her about this relationship, or you in this case. Amy, I I I I, I feel this uh, shame <laughs> that I want to share with you because I feel so shameful of of the fact that the head of this gang that was personally uh, haunting me and terrorizing me is now in the Israeli government. Who is that? Itamar Ben-Gvir. No kidding. He was the person walking up and down. No, he, running, he, no, he, his group? He's leader. He's the leader of this right, extra right wing. Um, I, I, I don't call them otherwise than gang. Yeah. And yeah. and 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 they, they are very violent and they have uh I I I I, I don't know how to phrase it otherwise. I'm I'm shameful. I feel I have like no idea. I, wow. <laughs> I, I I we've been demonstrating for 16 weeks in the streets of Israel against this shift that our society had taken and we're so so worried and i mean we we don't enjoy the same peaceful sleeps that we had before november 4th 2002 the past month were uh taking its toll not only in a sense that the tomorrow is unknown, the present is is so fragile, and and we, and the most horrific nightmare of the the Jewish heritage, which is civil war, citizens going one against another, brothers and sisters, siblings fighting each other over ideology, uh, might. God forbid, from, from this happening. But I believe the ground of democracy should be retaught due to this to this uh protest that mm -hmm. I am part of. Mm -hmm. You've been active in the in the protest, you you were telling us before. If you're if you're if you are uh you believe in democracy, you must be active. And I'm active in the streets and I'm active online and I'm active among my activists, uh, friends who are so courageous and so brave and I'm, I'm, I'm giving them my support and my voice and I'm, I'm, I'm helping with whatever is needed because this is the time to, to, be, to be part of stopping this, this change that might lead us to become something that I grew up in my Iranian family being so knowledgeable about that uh, a society can change overnight. Mm -hmm. oh, my, Iranian, my Iranian aunts and uncles were, uh, were um, immigrating to Israel. They, did, they didn't make Aliyah because they didn't want to become Israelis. They became Israelis just because they were stateless. They mm -hmm. liked being in Iran, but after the revolution in 1979, they found themselves moving to Israel and taking the Israeli citizenship upon themselves, but not willingly. And I don't want to move elsewhere. I don't have this extra passport in my drawer. Only the Israeli one, and I, I I love being in Israel. I love Tel Aviv. I belong here. I love traveling to America, but I love <laughs> coming back home here. Um, that was a big I, part of the character too. 
that she she had no interest in living in exile with her Palestinian lover. She had to get home. She re-acknowledges having home. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. She re-evaluates re the fact that she was born to, to this existence of the Jewish life in the Middle East, under this sun, on this ground, over watching this Mediterranean Sea, having this experience is not taken for granted after you experience the taste of exile. Mm -hmm. Being elsewhere can be nice, but for a while, then you come back home. Do you think, I was going to ask you anyway about, do you think that your, the Iranian background has um, shaped, has been a big part of shaping that, that part of you? I mean, has, do you feel like you're part of a Mizrahi community of, you know, artistically or otherwise? Sure, sure. Being part of the Mizrahi community is, 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 <laughs> it's not a choice. It's the, 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 the shade of the, of the skin. Mm. It's 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 to begin with an an, an identity that you carry uh, physically, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the next happening is the fact that that you're labeled due to that, mm -hmm. and the the most recent one that is like twenty something years ago is the awareness that the multicultural existence in Israel should be more equal, more welcoming more uh, included mm -hmm. and and the Iranian element is is more it's more uh, personal in in a sense that is a is a is a it's a kind of Mizrahi existence it's a kind of Israeli uh, Mizrahi being like a sub a subgroup. Yes, yeah, a sub a subgroup, a subconscious, a sub uh, memory of a place I never uh, and cannot travel to that I had to imagine, and I think it 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 goes hand by hand in hand in the fact that I became a storyteller that I that the place where my ancestors came from is a place that exists only in my mem on my imagination. I can only guess it. I can only try to imagine it or follow yes. their, sorry. No, no, go on. No, no, to, 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 um, to experience it via storytelling and to be, to become the storyteller in Hebrew of their broken Persian or their broken Farsi. And to, to give this as a, my, my early beginning, my debut novel, Persian Brides was, was absolutely that. Later on it had evolved, but it's absolutely that. That was actually my question is, because your first novel is called, in English it's called Persian Brides, right? And it's about, yeah. It's, it's, it's using my grandma's memory uh, mixed with tons and tons of imagination, wild imagination of a uh, 21 years old that, that was me, <laughs> uh, exactly uh, 29 years ago when I sat down to write it, and I guess it it's uh, I, I I'm not so much of a fan of of describing lit literature as a channel or mystical experience, but I believe that the fact that I was enjoying all the liberties of being born in Israel and being given the chances to master the Hebrew, I was somehow giving a voice to all the, all my ancestors' mothers, all my, the mother of my mother of my mother who were muted, their voice was was not heard. And, and I, I somehow, Related to them, uh, and 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 needed to contour my own identity on their background. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I believe I read that before um, this book, before All the Rivers was um, proposed for the Israeli National High School curriculum, the, the thing that led to the problem. Um, three that... times, three times. The artistic, the artistic commit, committee in the, in the Ministry of Education had found this book to be extremely relevant, important, and fine mm -hmm. enough to be included in the high school curriculum. But then came the ministerial uh, uh, committee, which, which is nominated by the current minister, and they wanted to please the master. Yeah. And they had to give arguments. They had to state the reasons for why this book should be excluded. And I believe that the, the commotion, the whole controversy that was aroused in Israel was due to the arguments that they, they, they said, this book might encourage assimilation. And I believe that if the Minister of Education was really an educator, a thinker, a Jewish uh, teacher mm -hmm. that follows the wisdom of, of, of our ancestors, he would have taken the chance to question this term assimilation under being uh, conduct, conducting a Jewish life Sovereign, uh, 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 in, in sovereignty, when we are the majority, when we control our lives, our destiny, our Jewishness is not no longer a minority. Mm -hmm. right. He would have taken the chance of asking what assimilation means in 2016 in Israel. Mm -hmm. right. But he didn't. No, he, he was a, well, well, I mean, I was thinking, I'm thinking, listening to you, I mean, and you, you also, you talk about how your, your book actually is trying to question this, this deceitful idea of us and them. Since then, if anything, us and them has become even more, I mean, it's become the, the, the way so many more people seem to live. It's only, it's only, uh, what, that's, that's eight years ago, nine, seven years ago now. But um, do you see, are you pessimistic when you see all this? I mean, there's so much more us and them out there now than even there was then. So true, Amy. Do you see any way, well, let's, let's look at it. Let's, let, rather than depress each other, let's, let's flip <laughs> it around. Um, what are the, I mean, all those teachers wanted to teach your book. Um, what did they see in it? What's the what 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 is it in your book that can that can help this? That can you know? How do you how do you feel as if the book speaks to teenagers, for instance, you know, young high schoolers? It's humanistic. <laughs> it's generous about towards humans. both both yeah. humans, mm -hmm. and it, and I, I portray the Palestinian characters with the most. Uh, Respect that I portray the Israeli woman. I, I don't I don't give any one of them a better um, treat. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the letters that I receive from readers, the Palestinian diaspora uh, uh, readership, is is it corresponds with me digitally and via letters that I receive and I, I get to be blessed and I get to be cur encouraged by them because they say you you that they thank me for describing this young Palestinian man uh, so um, coherently and 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 uh, lo loyally, and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and somebody, one of them wrote, uh, I know that the 10 fingers that wrote this novel is Jewish, is Zionist, yet <laughs> it's fair. That's the greatest compliment and then all that can receive. That's very interesting. You you must be. Are you getting a lot of um, 
you have a lot of international readers now that maybe you wouldn't have had if the book hadn't been banned. Is that right? Banned from curriculum, we're still democracy. Right. It was available right. on bookshelves in, in bookstores and libraries. And I got support from headmasters and teachers and, and, and so many of the Israeli liberals uh, among them are my big brothers, my my teachers, Amos Oz, mm. A.B. Oshua, uh, may he, uh, uh, recently we, we lost Meir Shalev, one of Israel's prominent authors who was a very dear to me, was very f- much of a friend and and may he, Ibadele uh, Chaim David Grossman, they were all supporting me. If they weren't there to, to bodyguard <laughs> my book and my writing and myself, uh, I wouldn't have gone through this scandal. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, so, I mean, it, it, it wasn't at ease, but it was in, in, in one piece. <laughs> So I know you wanted to say something about Mayor Shalev at the outset, and I, I I forgot to leave you the opening. Why don't you, do you want to do that now? And then we'll go back. I have one or two more questions and, and then, then we'll open it up. Just, 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 just shortly say that, that Mayor was uh, the most, uh, he, he could, he could write about sentiments without being sentimental. And his Hebrew was superb. And he was so funny in his writing. And if you haven't got the chance to look into one of his translated book to, to English, please do. And, and, and he was also a, a great friend, some, somebody that, that made me laugh very, very easily. And we, we shared uh, funny moments in book fairs and traveling. Uh, to to literary festivals around the world, and he was a great companion, among all the other things that he was. Yeah, I um, that's that's it's it's nice it's nice to thank you thank you for for saying that for for a moment, readers. We I I I greatly concur, and we have a little a little piece about him that ran in a moment newsletter. Um, about uh, I'm a particular fan of that book he wrote about his grandmother and the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I, I heard we we shared the same agent, and I heard from my agent that that the American readership is a bit much bigger fan of that novel than here in Israel. In Israel, when they mentioned his greatest novels, the one about the grandman and the vacuum cleaner wasn't mentioned so often <laughs> as I hear American readers are mentioning this book. But um, an author should have teachers we we don't come to write novels books stories unless we read them and and i i feel like i am an, i'm an offspring of male uh as much as i am with grossman and 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 and, and, the, and the yoshua and oz and, and but but i really i really i i <laughs> I really, uh, it, 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 it's a time of, of, of shifting generations and, and I would like to stay the young author at least <laughs> for more, more decades than, mm-hmm. than, than possible. Well, it's but a it's, good segue, a good segue to another mm-hmm. question, which is, is there, are you working on something now? Yes, I am about hopefully to to hand a manuscript to my 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 uh, editor, uh, who is again the same editor as Mel Shalev's, and uh, <clears throat> I received an email on Sunday saying, "What's up?" Um, but I I, I I I'm not yet ready to let go of it. I it it, re- it needs a little bit more. Uh, the problem with books that they don't change, they stay the same as they were. And, and if there's a chance to perfect them a little bit more, I take the time. I, I don't, uh, I don't give a damn. (laughs) Is there, (laughs) are you, is, is it, is it some, do you feel like you can tell us anything about this novel or, or are you superstitious? 
it's not superstition. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's our greatest uh, author, uh, Shai Agnon, Shmuel Yosef Agnon, who had said that the satisfaction you receive by telling about the book that you write nowadays might dismiss the appetite that you need to desire the writing. <laughs> so I, be I better listen to, to, to this uh, spiritual rabbi, this literary rabbi, and follow his advice. And when time comes, I, 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 I hope you'd find uh, the subject to be intriguing. Oh, good. Well, that's good. That just whets our appetite a little bit. And <laughs> keeps us wanting more, right? So um, I'm not teasing. I'm I'm just saying. No, I'm no. just saying that that, that it's, it's something that I read that Hemingway had said as well, and uh, and uh, oh, we were born on the same day, and I'm such a big admirer of him, uh, Faulkner. Oh, Faulkner, <laughs> you, you share a birthday with with Faulkner. Wow. I share. I I am I am proud to say that we were both uh, born September twenty fifth. Oh, very good. That's <laughs> yes. The omens are good. Well, let me let me use that. I'm gonna. I have another. I have another question for you about uh, politics. But first, I want to ask you a purely literary question, and that is: I noticed in the coverage that in the early coverage, your book is described in English as having the title Border Life, um, is, which I guess is closer to the Hebrew. Um, how did yes. it come to be? Can you talk about the title a little bit? Why was it called that? And how did you come to change the title to All the Rivers? And at what point did, did you do that? See, it's technical, it, it, it's not political. No, 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 it, uh, it, might be, it might be tedious, but it's also to do with the American politics because when when the book was about to be published, my editor at Random House uh, um, was worried that the immediate translation of Border Life, which is actually a version of Gader Chaya, which in Hebrew means a hedge, but mm -hmm. but it has a poetic resonance to it it has a, a, a like an echo of a borderline that is alive mm -hmm. a fence a fence that has a life of its own that has a biography that has uh, an outline that can be can be that can be redrawn mm -hmm. um he was he was worried that it might echo to the american readership with the wall that Trump was talking about between the states and, and Mexico. Oh, of course, border. <laughs> that's, that's very interesting. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. So, so he said, come up with another name. And we were contemplating and contemplating and, and another theme in the book is the sea, the Mediterranean Sea. And there's a beautiful uh, po poet, poem by a poet named Avoti Shuun who who recalls the quote from the Bible about all the rivers are floating to the same sea. Mm -hmm. And you added and, that. In the, so in the American edition, that's actually in the epigraph, right? So that was yeah. added later for the American edition? Yeah. yeah. Huh. In, 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 in other, other languages, <clears throat> if somebody has good connections in Wikipedia, this book has already passed the 30th uh, translation. And I'm most proud of the recent one. It, it's to Arabic. Really? <laughs> it took a while. <laughs> yes. Very interesting. Huh. Yes. And and it's nice to have a readership in in the Scandinavians and in Asia. I mean, South, no. Ah, in 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 various countries and and cultures and languages, but here having the book translated to Arabic, it's uh, a gift yeah. that I can I can carry on to my, to Hassan's family, and mm. it was it, to my to my uh, partner's family, and it was meaningful for them. Oh, that's very to nice see, 
to see to see his dedication in in Arabic. I, I wonder if you'll have um, controversies in various Arabic Arabic speaking countries that mirror the one in Israel from the other Bring side. Bring it on! Bring right? it on! <laughs> now no, I can take it. Right. No, Let's I know. ban it. Let's ban it from more schools. <laughs> <laughs> although, although, as we said before. We can laugh about it nowadays, but it's 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 it it was it was it was one of the reasons that it made me so 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 uh, sad that th this was the very first time ever that the book was ban banned by the by the by the Ministry of Education in Israel or, or any book banned anywhere in Israel. Really? And yeah. It wow. never happened, and it, it, I, I hope it will never happen again. And and this historical moment, I had to carry on. And everywhere I went around the globe, I I I became like the the presenter of the Israeli democracy, saying, "No, no, 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 no! It was only from from high schools. It was we we are still a democracy. We are proud democracy, free speech <laughs> and free thought and free expression." It's the, the the air that that we breathe. It's the, the the water that us fish, Israeli fish, are swimming in. And in contrary of of being attacked, I was defending what I call the Israeli life. Interesting. Well, maybe you have some words of wisdom or or um, uh, cheering. You know, words of, of cheerleading words for the. There are many, many authors of the United States lately whose books are being, again, it's not banning exactly, but you know, whose books are being challenged, pulled from library shelves in various states. It's become a, a it's almost a game with certain kinds of politicians to show they can be tougher on books with certain themes. I mean, do you, what, what do you, what, what do you, what's your advice for authors in that situation? <clears throat> politicians like all us humans uh, are doomed to be bygones and 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 books are eternal ah uh, oh that's nice i like that yeah <laughs> that makes sense um so uh i'm gonna i'm gonna let two people um uh so um one person wants to know um, what the title is of the Arabic translation. Do you know? Oh, great, great question. Thank you so much for that. Because Arabic and Polish are the two, the two languages that carried on the original title. Because Gadel uh, Chaya, the hedge, mm -hmm. uh, in Arabic is the same Jadel Chaya. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. And if you want to hear the Polish, I know it too. It's Zhevopot. And it also means a hedge, a hedgerow. <laughs> Again, Do you speak Polish? But, no, I don't speak Polish, but, but I have a, a good uh, a readership in Poland and I go back and forth and I learned it because I heard it so so often. Zhevopot. That's great. Do you want to, I mean, if you would go back for a moment and unpack, as the literary people say, the, the symbol of the living hedge. I mean, what's the what? T t can you talk about the imagery there? Why why is that the why is that the title image? I mean, why why that and not the sea? You know, since you talked about the sea. I mean, what's the tell? Talk about the living, the border that's living. Is that you know? Is it Be because we're we're uh, our our existence here in the Middle East is the, the borders are not agreed. Mm -hmm. So the outline of your identity after 2000 years of being stateless, now that the state is, there's no peace where you begin and where you end, that it uh, manifests itself. This fact that us and our neighbors, we, we don't have a agreed separation or or uh, agreement of, of, of where we stand and where they do, uh, of course, and the occupation should be mentioned because we can go, go through a discussion over this book without mentioning the occupation. 
That was um, my <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, yeah. But there's, 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 a, there's a beautiful saying by Benjamin Franklin that mentions uh, that you should love your neighbor, but you, should, you shouldn't take off the hedge. Good fences make good neighbors? Exactly that. Yeah. Robert, Frost. that just, Robert Frost. No, I, I, I was referring to, to Franklin saying that the hedge is helpful to uh -huh. keep the love towards your neighbor. And the one about the one by Frost is the one that that the higher the 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 the, the good fences make good neighbors. But the okay. love, the love for the other requires a, a contour of your identity. Mm -hmm. Like a permeable barrier, is that what you're thinking? Not a boundary, but like a living, flexible. So, uh, so yeah, not a not a not a not a barrier in a sense of uh, obstacle, but a barrier in a sense of uh, outline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you have a do you have a political vision for the um for for the for the occupation for the for the end of it? I mean, I don't want to put you on the spot and, and it's not it's No no not. no I, I'm on the spot. It's too you late. Are. I mean you sort of put yourself <laughs> on the spot over the years. But I, I'll just I'll just step, take a step back. I mean, it's interesting that the political issues behind the story in your book are not really the same as the political issues that have Israelis on the streets right now. It's a whole it's a different they're sort of separate in people's minds. So so do you see, I mean, do you see any hope for borders to be dissolved as you, as you talk about, you know, for these borders to become less, less harsh? I'm not optimistic. No. Uh, the reason the book was banned from curriculum wasn't the fact that it's dangerous to the Jewish identity. It was because religion had taken the place of humanism in Israel in the past two decades. And, and youngsters who were born in this new millennial, millennium have never experienced what we, in growing up and becoming adults in the 90s, we had tasted aspiration for peace and aspiration for something that Rabin was heading towards and, and leading, uh, being a true leader and not, a, not a, a politician that is much more eager to stay in power than to make his people's uh, destiny more peaceful and, and more stable. And the fact that, that religion here is is different than in America. This is why I love having the Jewish holidays in America because it's so generous and so much fun. And having a Yom Kippur in a synagogue in, 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 in New York was joy, you know? I was fasting, but I was laughing. It was okay. It was okay to have both, to mm -hmm. hear the prayer, to hear the singing, to sit together, females and males, and to tell stories. It was such a revelation, such an opposite experience of what I know from synagogues in Israel that it's are so like hard. That, oh. No, everything is so severe, and there's a competition who is more orthodox than the other, and and mm. it's as if extreme being being more extreme makes you more a better Jew. Mm. No, being more compromising, more inclusive, more forgiving, more human. Mm. Well, let's see. So, so, um, so I don't want to. I don't want to end on too too negative a note about Israel. I also don't want. I just just to go back for a second. I don't want you to think that America has all the joy and and and. You know, no, no. Lack of religious <laughs> issues. So uh, actually someone on the on the chat one of the questions wanted to know if you had meant to say something further about Faulkner, about you know, with whom you share a birthday, whether whether he's someone oh. you talk to. I mean, talk about the dark side of you know American <laughs> life. But, but it's, I it's love Faulkner. Faulkner. I you love know. him. I I I one of 
the most read book of mine uh, growing, becoming an author of, uh, I, in general, I love, I love Amer American literature. I, I, I am influenced by American literature, perhaps as much as I am I, by the, 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 the American media, films and, and TV. Uh, but Light in August had really affected me in, in a way that I cherish. I, I when when I was writing the eulogy for me in Shalev last week at Haaretz, I said that that what really in, was interesting for me was what happens to the spirit after the last page, and the fact that there are characters that you read in books that they become part of you, mm. and when you come across uh, points in life, they 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 echo and they ring. And mm -hmm. bells from from uh, the rage and the fury, and and uh, especially like in August, was are are carried within me, and yeah. this is a, a a a privilege given to us by translators. Uh, unless we had translators transforming our storytelling from Hebrew to other languages and vice versa, the the, the treasury of literature of the world being brought to us in Hebrew, uh, we would be doomed to be a province as we are. <laughs> but intellectually, all of us, you know, <laughs> yeah, not just, not just we, can, we can enjoy fruits of minds, great minds from overseas. That's right. Well, well, first, first of all, I just have to say the idea of Faulkner in Hebrew is just making my head explode. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine what it would be like to try to translate Faulkner into Hebrew. I'm just glad that some brave soul was able to do it. Um, but let, let me just say, since we're wrapping up, that um, that gift that you're talking about is, I, I mean, I think we all want to thank you for that very gift. You've, you've, for, for, um, for the character, you know, for, for uh, Hilmi, that, you know, the character that you, you wanted to make him live on. And I think for all of, for the for the reader, that's that's so that's so true. And if Liat is not entirely you, then it's 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 a great it's a great pleasure to learn more about you know that side of her and what happened to her after this. I I was I was uh, writing the novel. I was sure that if it was me to be gone, then <clears throat> it was him to write the book because because it, 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 I felt responsible. I felt responsible being a storyteller and being the last. To be close to him, and and New York was <laughs> was a uh, was a great background to realize how much uh, home far away from home, yet having your home is uh, and 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 to 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 share this this gift of being raised in freedom and with your human rights and with having your dreams come true easily as we guys as as guys we have we have in in israel and i hope my friends in uh in the west bank and in gaza to enjoy as much well thank you so so much that's a lovely note to end on and um i'll turn it back over to manny but i just want to thank you it's been such a joy to talk with you and uh Good luck with the new novel and, and everything. Thank you so much, Amy. It was a pleasure for me and it's the first of many, I promise you. I have That's a good cool. feeling about it. <laughs> we, we certainly look forward to it. Really wanna thank you both, Amy and Dorit. What a fascinating conversation and really bringing us into your personal account. Wanna thank all of our listeners today, our viewers. Um, Dorit, just thought at the end about, um, the fifth chapter of Avot in Jewish tradition, according to the labor is the reward. Um, and there's no question that your story, your profound story is one that speaks to many layers in today's landscape in Israel and among Israelis and the way that it relates not just historically and with normative views, but enable, enables those of us not on the ground to better understand the many nuances and social tensions that come with, as you said, Middle Eastern life. Um, really appreciate your thoughtful facilitation, Amy. 
um, and all the excitement that you brought. I, I, I felt it. I, I shared it um, in uncovering so many elements of Dorit, uh, of what you wrote about. I hope you all enjoyed it, enjoyed today as much as I did. And uh, we'll all be looking out for your next publication, Dorit. Um, and just uh, want to mention that this is, again, part of our virtual book series. We have Israel 75 programs all throughout the community. Um, Wednesday, May 17th, we'll have our next session in the Israel book series with Alana Kershan, uh, her acclaimed book, If All the Seas Were Ink. Be, out, be on the lookout for registration uh, links. I think one's been posted already. And just want to encourage you to engage as much as possible for all these amazing opportunities to engage with Israel, Israel at 75, all across town. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you soon. Yom Atzmaut Sameach Vedemokratia, Demokratia. You're here. Amen. Amen.